Hi, it's Chicken Bone John here, and today I want to talk about how you install your neck in your cigar box guitar, and in particular, neck angle. A lot of people sort of say, is it necessary? How much do I need? Uh, so I'm going to give you my take on this and how uh, we do guitars. I'm going to look at a little bit of history to see how it was done in the past. Right, here we have uh, a fairly typical guitar, certainly typical of the sort of thing that comes out of our workshop here at Chicken Bone John Guitars. As you can see, it's got a through neck running right the way through from the headstock to the tailstock, so it's structural right the way through the guitar. The, this is put in so that the neck and the body are in the same plane they're parallel to one another and the important thing to note here on this particular guitar is that the fretboard is raised up from the body on this there's a gap of about five millimeters between the underneath of the fretboard and the top of the box that's about a quarter of an inch it's all about geometry so this is a guitar made with no neck angle the rights and wrongs of this some people will argue now there isn't a right and wrong way of doing this you can build your guitar with the neck perfectly parallel to the top or you can introduce a neck angle either way works and as i say it's all a matter about geometry and if we look at this i'll try and illustrate it with some uh sort of drawings that bring out these points but you've got a few basic things happening. You've got the line of the neck and we're not going to get into involved whether this has got relief or curve or whatever. We'll treat this as a straight line. You have the line of the neck, you have the line of the body and you've got the strings. Now the height of the strings above the frets is known as the action and for most guitars whether they're fretted or unfretted this needs to be so fairly workable on a typical uh, regular guitar you're going to be looking you know one and a half to two and a half millimeters at the 12th fret that's a conventional place to measure it between the string and the fret if you're playing slide a little bit higher but not much down at this end where the strings come over the nut that height's controlled by the nut and in this case it's just a machine screw or bolt but it can be a piece of bone or plastic or it can indeed be a fret wire but that really only governs the height of the strings at this end of the fretboard the height of the strings further up is governed by this the bridge and as you can see that stands up from the top of the guitar so there's a few things happening the geometry the neck the body, the strings, the height of the bridge. A couple of things that make your guitar work well is the term break angle and this refers to the change of angle that happens when a string goes over the nut and you can see it tilts back this is more of a Fender style headstock with a Gibson style it tilts back to achieve that break angle over here which means the strings don't skip about over here you've also got a corresponding break angle that's happening here over the bridge from the saddle which in this piece is a piece of fret wire through to the string fay rules and there's a corresponding angle there I wouldn't I would say you know it's going to be in the order of 10 to 15 degrees if you can get it steeper than that it doesn't really matter if it's less than that the bridge can either t tend to slip around or the strings will skip around on the top of the saddle I mean, this one's got a bridge with slots that that stop that happening but the 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 brake angle is pretty important uh, and you can see the consequences of what happens if you haven't got enough brake angle here when you're fiddling about with this relationship of geometries okay that's the way I would conventionally build my guitar with a neck in parallel. Let's have a look at another way we build guitars where we do introduce a neck angle. As you can see this one is built or going to be built 
as a box with a license plate on the top. Now there's an important uh, difference here, although the neck will sort of run into the body, it doesn't come through this end. We're going to be using one of these, a sort of strap tie bridge with the adjustable saddles. But what we find is these are very limited. There's only a certain amount of adjustment in this. So what we do is to make our necks so that you can introduce some angle. And if you can see, I hope you might be able to pick this up. That's with the neck in parallel. And can you see I'm pushing that head down? And we control that by having this screwed in here and an adjuster screw from the back which pushes that forward. So can you see that the, the headstock is tilting up and down so we can control it there. So we can set the angle exactly how we want. To put a neck in permanently at that angle it's a bit of a fiddle because this angle is very very shallow. In the diagrams we'll see if we can sort of show what we're talking about. So that's how we do when we put an angle in our guitar necks. Uh, it's not fixed, it's adjustable which is a bit more sophisticated but we tend to do it when we're using this type of bridge. What we're going to look at now is how the conventional way uh, an ordinary electric guitar is made. So let's just have a look at how this neck is set into this Telecaster guitar. Just turn that, hopefully you can see this. The neck and the body are in the same plane. There's no shim, no angle here. This is bolted straight in or screwed straight into here and the fretboard stands up a little bit from the top of the guitar. Here at the bridge it's quite low, you know the saddles, the top of the saddle is still quite low over the top of the guitar and the brake angle is introduced here over the actual saddle itself, the string comes along over the barrel of the adjustable bridge, dives down these holes and it's anchored in the back of the guitar. So that's uh, that conventional fender style way of putting the neck into the into the body. So here we have the other typical way that an electric guitar is made. This is a uh, diamond by Guild, very as you can see very traditional arch top jazz guitar. Now the thing to notice on this is the way this neck is put in at an angle. You can see quite clearly the body and the neck are at different angles. It's thrown out a little bit because this has an arch top uh, but you still do get guitars made like this if you look at the Gibson Les Paul. The solid body guitar is made very similar to this but obviously much smaller. But the SG which has got a flat top the neck is let in in a similar sort of way. Now let's look at that again. So you can see quite an angle here and one of the reasons you need that is because the, uh, the top is arched so these strings need to be elevated and you have quite a high bridge here because it's a long way back to the tailpiece, long way back to the tailpiece with this trapeze tailpiece so to get enough brake angle, I hope you can see that, this is quite high. So this is from a different tradition really uh, this style of guitar you can see if you think about it it's more like a violin would be made. If you think of a violin the neck is cantered back the instrument's got an arch top or belly and it's got a very high bridge. I think so probably was down to Orville Gibson when he started making his mandolins and guitars in the violin style so to get as you can imagine to get that angle is a much more complicated job than simply putting it in flat and in this obviously we've got there's a dovetail in here and a block um, so the the geometry of the joint as well as the whole setup of the guitar is much more complicated but again we're still dealing with the same factors we have the line of the neck the line of the body 
the line of the strings and the height of the bridge with the resulting brake angle over the bridge and also while we're at it you can see you know you've got your brake angle over the headstock similar sort of thing so you get a steeper angle on this type of tilt back headstock that's why on some guitars with the Fender style headstock you get string retainers to make sure the strings go back and they're not skipping about on the nut so that's the two classic ways of approaching guitar building and as I'm sure most of you will realize neither Gibson nor Fender is right or wrong they're just different some people prefer one some people prefer the other likewise making your guitar whether you put the neck in flat or at an angle neither one's right or wrong but there are a few basic things which you cannot avoid you cannot avoid the geometries that are needed to get this playable if you're remotely interested in how high the strings are above the fretboard whether it's playing by finger or slide this geometry is crucial but that's all it is it's not magic it's just geometry and we'll show you on a few illustrations how that sort of works okay with a simple drawing we're going to have a look at this this is a cross section through the guitar so you've got the neck and the body and you can see the fretboard or fingerboard is raised up above the box itself and we set this with a reasonable action and a reasonable sized bridge a reasonable height bridge which gives you a decent break angle now the next thing we're going to do is to drop the neck down in the body a little bit here we go you can see the neck's been dropped down so the underside of the fretboard is level with the top of the box now so it's been dropped a few millimeters the action's still okay the bridge has come down in height a little bit and the brake angle over the tail at the tail is reduced a bit it's still okay we're going to drop it down further so now the top of the fingerboard is level with the box and we really have got a problem here because can you see how low that bridge is there's a couple of things you've got virtually no brake angle so the strings are going to be skipping about and the strings are so close to the top of the box they would actually be almost impossible to play so that is far from an ideal situation and on the next slide you can see what often happens in that style of setup you end up with a taller bridge to get a decent brake angle and a crazy high action okay so that's progressively uh, dealing with that neck set in parallel now let's have a look what happens when we introduce a back angle now from that previous situation with the neck level with the top of the box we've put in quite a steep neck angle two and a half degrees you can see that has improved the situation and there's still room for that bridge to be reduced down to bring the angle uh, action down a wee bit if we go into the next one we've got a two degree back angle so you can see we've got a sort of fairly optimum setup with that then we can reduce it down again to one and a half degree so you can begin to see how this works I think it's a little bit more fiddly doing the neck angle that's why I like to put in an adjustable neck and we don't have it running through the tail stop like on this example we'll show you in the next set of slides similar sort of thing on uh, a strat type bridge rather than a floating bridge here we're going to look at a guitar with a strat type adjustable bridge and this is set in with the neck running parallel and the fretboard so that the underside of the fretboard is level with the top of the box so that's a fairly optimal setup okay now let's see what happens when we get into trouble with this here's one where the neck is raised from the body and you can see the strings are hitting the fretboard and we simply cannot get the bridge to adjust high enough to give us some decent action so that's, you don't want to do it like that and here's going the other way if we drop the neck 
low relative to the body, i.e. with the fretboard level with the top of the box, we can't get the bridges down low enough. So the action is going to be too high. So here's the last one where we actually introduce an angle, which is what we do with our uh, adjustable bridges. So it's set with the fretboard where the underside of the fretboard is touching the top of the box and we've got a little bit of angle so you can adjust it and get an optimum action. So there we have it, a couple of ways of putting the guitar neck into your cigar box guitar, either straight through and parallel or with a neck angle. Neither one's better or worse than the other ones, neither is right or wrong. It's whatever suits you. Uh, but remember, there's no magic to it. It really is just a simple matter of geometry and the relationship between these various bits and pieces. Hope that's been some use. Thanks for watching and bye for now.